Welcome to Treasures. Today we're going to explore together a remarkable treasure. So stay with us as we'll start our exploration after the break. Our treasure is located in the heart of Islamic Cairo. Actually, we're coming to you from the streets of Al Muayz al And our treasure of today is the 14th century AD mosque and madrasa of the Sultan Az Zahir Barku. Actually, he was the founder of a new family. He was the founder of the Borgi Mamluk. Sultan Barkouk complex is located next door to Al Nasser Muhammad ibn Qalawun's complex. Barkouk's complex was built between 1384 and 1386 AD. The architect Shihab al-Din Ahmed ibn Muhammad al-Tuluni, who belonged to a family of court architects and surveyors, was in charge of part of the construction. The name of Jarkat al-Khalili, the master of Barkouk Court and the founder of the famous Khan al-Khalili, appears in the inauguration inscription on the facade and in the courtyard. Sultan Barkouk was of Circassian origin, recruited under the Turkish Bahari Mamluk. The Circassians were subjects of the Tartar Golden Horde and were first imported to Egypt as slave troops by Qalawun in the 13th century. After being freed in 1363 AD, Barkouk established his dominance in the Mamluk government in 1382 AD. to have with me researcher and lecturer as well as well-known tour guide Mr. Ahmed Abu Ala. Ahmed, I'd like first to start by asking you about the location. Why uh, did uh, the Sultan Barkouk choose this area, uh, the street of uh, Al-Mu'izz al din Allah al-Fatimi, uh, to be the location of his burial? First of all, the Great Street is the main street in central Cairo and medieval Cairo. Mm -hmm. So most of the Mameluk sultans were keen to acquire pieces of land that remaining from the Fatimid palaces and gardens mm -hmm. that used to cover the whole area here. Mm -hmm. So right here we are standing behind 
the palace of the Fatimid Sultan. Mm -hmm. So this area used to be gardens, mm -hmm. but the gardens and the cemeteries of the Fatimids broken into smaller lots. Mm -hmm. And during the Mameluk period, sultans and emirs were keen to buy lands in this area. Mm -hmm. And that's how the great street turned during the Ayyubite period and the Mameluk period into small lots on both sides of the road. Mm -hmm. And that's how we ended up with number of Mameluk lands. Mm -hmm. One generation after another, mm -hmm. buildings on the roadside started with Kalawun, mm -hmm. then Al Nasir Muhammad, mm -hmm. son of Kalawun, mm -hmm. then Barkuk later on, mm -hmm. 1382, bought this piece of land mm -hmm. and started the construction of his great complex, mm -hmm. which mosque, madrasa, mm -hmm. and a tomb mm -hmm. for the Sultan and his family. This is how Sultan Barku came to build right on the main street during his period of ruling. Mm -hmm. Sultan Barku is a unique person. Mm -hmm. First of all, why we call him Barku? Yeah, because he has got such protruding mm -hmm. eyes mm -hmm. to look like two blooms. Mm -hmm. And that's why they call him Barku, because the eyes look like two blooms. Sultan Barkuk never born in Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was born in 1340. Mm -hmm. Came to Egypt to join the army of the Mamelukes mm -hmm. around the age of 20. Mm -hmm. Served as a military Mameluk mm -hmm. captain, then was escalated in the army mm -hmm. till he became like a general. Mm -hmm. Around 1380, mm -hmm. something happened in Egypt. The end of Sultan Kalawun family mm -hmm. came to the time of someone called Sultan Shaban Ali, mm -hmm. who died suddenly, mm -hmm. leave behind his little baby. Mm -hmm. He was only six years old. Mm -hmm. His name is Ali. Mm -hmm. Little six years old Ali happened to be the Sultan of Egypt, the end of the Kalawun family. The two generals and the big emirs mm -hmm. in his army happened to be the guardian of the throne. Mm -hmm. So Barkuk, was one of the two guardians of the throne of little Ali. But after one year, the boy was too helpless, too powerless. And everybody elected Barkuk to be the Sultan. And that's how it happened. Sultan Barkuk stepped in, took the throne, took the crown, and became the Sultan of Egypt. This is a very interesting change and shift of power. The end of one dynasty and the beginning of a new dynasty. Mm -hmm. So Sultan Kalawun established the early Mameluk governorship. Mm -hmm. Sultan Barkuk established the second generation of the Mameluks. We call them Circassian Mameluk because he was born near the Caspian Sea, mm -hmm. which nowadays Georgia, Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So he hardly spoke in Arabic, mm -hmm. but he lived in Egypt most of his life. Mm -hmm. and he showed a great skills of leadership. Mm -hmm. He was smart, he was able to offer a lot of help to the Egyptians, people loved him, tax cuts of all kinds, and that's why he was well loved and very popular at that time. After a few years ruling, mm -hmm. there is a military coup against mm -hmm. Barkuk himself from inside. And other emirs and generals decided to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he escaped. He was exiled for one year mm -hmm. in the famous fort in South Jordan Desert 
the port of Krak, where he was imprisoned for one year. During this one year, other sultans were in power. Then his fans and friends and emirs traveled all the way to the desert of Jordan, brought him back to Egypt, and reinstate him one more time. So when we talk about Barkuk, we talk about the first period of Barkuk, the second period of Barkuk. The construction of these great complex never started until the second period of Kirkuk. Yeah. The construction yeah. started in 1383. Mm -hmm. Would you please tell us about the complex itself of uh, the Sultan Barkouk? Sultan Barkouk, when he returned from exile, mm -hmm. he decided to buy a piece of land in what used to be the gardens of the Fatimids. Mm -hmm. So he bought this lot, mm -hmm. which rectangular in shape, mm -hmm. more or less 50 meters wide on the main road mm -hmm. and almost 100 meters deep. Mm -hmm. And his famous architect, Shehab al-Din al-Suloni, mm -hmm. which a very famous family in Egypt, worked extensively in constructions during the Mamluk period mm -hmm. and they built number of buildings to number of Mamluk sultans they actually put this incredible design. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful complex with a facade mm -hmm. facing east mm -hmm. and an open courtyard with the dome above the tomb and the minaret mm -hmm. north of mm -hmm. the dome itself. So right on the facade, we will see the entrance, we'll see the dome, and we'll see the minaret. The minaret yes. is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most beautiful minarets in all salt and Islamic in Islamic architecture. Mm -hmm. Well known with the circles intersecting one another. Yeah. Those circles on top used to be inlaid with colored marble. It's mm -hmm. no longer exist. Mm -hmm. Which a system in Mamluk period called Al Ablaq. Mm -hmm. So the marble was intercated one another in an ablaq style. Mm -hmm. And on top we do have the pillars that carry the round top here. So the minaret the dome and the entrance is the three main elements before we enter inside and see the complex. So let's go. Let's go.